Hey y'all, it's Dive Banksters for BlueFirePoker.com, and welcome to the fourth episode of my Sit and Go Building Block series. In this episode, we're going to be playing naked. Just want to caution you right up front because of the nature of this episode, I will be doing everything in real time, so the editing won't be as polished as normal, and there might be some narration missteps. So let me uh, just apologize for that from the beginning. So what exactly do I mean we're going to be playing naked? Well, basically, I'm going to register for some games first off. And while those games are loading up, we'll talk about what we're going to be doing here. So we'll be playing four $16 Turbo 9-mans on stars. We won't be using Table Ninja, Jelper, or any other scripts at all. And there was no table selection at all. I just took the first four games available. Also, we won't be using any HUD stats whatsoever. So because of that, I'll have high on in-game reads. And we'll try to play close to the Nash Equilibrium when we don't have any reads available, um, for mostly for push-fold situations in late game. Also, I'm playing with no notes. Normally, I have a, a lot of players color-coded, so I know what type of player they are. And also, I keep decent notes on some players that help aid in the decision-making process, but I won't have any of those extra crutches to use today. And on top of that, I will have all of the player names covered up at the table. So I created a simple black HUD element, and it's going to be covering all of the players' names. And because of this, we won't even know if we're facing the same player on multiple tables. Um, you know, we are playing the 16s, so there are more than likely four or five of the same player on several different tables. And the reason that I'm doing this experiment is just to illustrate a basic strategy for sit and goes that can be somewhat profitable, although these are very tough games, um, so this experiment could completely fail and backfire. This is the first time I've ever attempted it, so we'll just sit back and see what happens. So I hear some games starting to load up there. I'm going to give them a minute and make sure that everything... Hopefully, hopefully uh, none of those names peek through there. I'm going to let them go for a minute and probably end up sitting out on a couple tables from the start. But just want to make sure a couple other things here. Um, not showing any VIP status. So I have no reads whatsoever on these players from the beginning. And we are not showing any VIP status of anyone, so that's good. Let's just take a peek on the arrow here. The HUD's up and running on some of them, but not all tables yet, so let's just let it go until I'm definitely sitting out on all these tables. Forgot to close down Table Ninja. That's probably running down my time bank. So we're going to have an extra crush here because we're not going to have any time. So hopefully this won't take too long. I just don't want to see any names at all. Don't want to get any idea at all what's going on. All tables except for one are covered. So let's just wait one more minute until that one shows a one on the hands here. And any second now, it should show up. Apologize for the delay, but from here on out, we should be rolling smooth. All right, we're showing one hand there. And I can look at all tables. They all appear to be covered. Um, 
Not sure what happened here, but we'll lead out. We've got a pair. Let's towel all these tables out so we can see everything. Bring ourselves back from the ones we're sitting out on. And hey, we took down a pot without having any idea what happened. Uh, King nine suited, got a limper. I can sometimes limp in position here, try to hit a big hand when the blinds are this low. And obviously, if we don't hit any type of major draw, we're done right away. Fold the king, queen three there. Get another free look at the big blind here. Jack seven. No real need to invest any money in that hand. We'll just check fold if he bets anything. And we've got some crazy action already. A min raise from under the gun and a shove from under the gun plus one. So let's keep an eye out from that player. Ooh, and we've got a call. So let's just make sure we pay very close attention to what type of range these guys are playing. Minimize the stars in the background so we have no distractions. So ace king versus queens. Practically the first hand of the tournament. Getting it all in. Generally, I'm not a big fan of getting ace king in early on in these type of games. Um, we have no idea who the other player was. So calling the queens there is probably a mistake unless you have a good read. Really good read on the guy shoving the ace king. Although someone three bet shoving over a min raise at the 10 20 blind level all, almost always is not a very good player. So you could feel pretty comfortable getting in the queens at that spot, but picking up a big chip advantage early is really helpful in these games. Uh, I can limp with the pocket sixes there as well, try to. Hit a pretty big hand. But I'm with these type of hands, the middle pocket pairs, obviously if we don't hit a set, we're completely done with the hand. Unfortunately, we don't really get a big pot here, so it's really no need to do much. We might take a stab at it since it's just the blinds and a limped pot. Not really too much on that board that I'm worried about. So I could throw out a two-thirds pot bet there and see if we can take it down right now. If not, I'm obviously done with the hand. And that's really what the early game is all about, is finding as many low-risk situations as you can to try to gain as many chips as you can in the early game and give yourself an advantage for mid game and late game situations. Um, I play a lot more loose aggressive in most games than a lot of your tip typical regulars would. Um, I've also been playing a lot of six max sit and goes lately, which, you know, really add to that loose aggressiveness. So we'll see how that translates to a non man style. And we're limping behind with the sixes again. Got a bit of the raise there against a somewhat loose player. He's already raised a couple times. Um, if we get a call, we might call behind here, but I don't think there's any reason to call with the pocket sixes here and risk that much of our stack. If we were getting much better odds, if one or two of the other guys had called, we might have been able to set mine there and get a really big pot. And Queen Jack under the gun is obviously never anywhere close to our range. Um, in case any of you are wondering, this is the collector theme available from Tilt Buster. TiltBuster.com. Um, and I'm also using their coffee deck. And it's a pretty simplified theme, and I like to keep things as basic as possible. Uh, I've also got the chat detached so that I have no distractions on the table whatsoever. And I've got everything minimized and chat turned off so I can't even see anyone talking so I don't end up with 
Let me just show you that here so I don't end up with any names showing. I'm really interested to see how this turns out in the middle and late game spot where knowing players' ranges is pretty crucial for making push fold decisions. But we'll see how it works. Normally the um, early game like this, especially at the $16 level, plays very slow and there's not a whole lot of action. Uh, most of these guys are playing you know, 15, 20, 30 tables at a time. And there were quite a few tables in the lobby when we registered, so I'm sure that we have a whole lot of regulars on these tables. Uh, after the games are over, we'll take a peek at who we were playing against and see what type of players we were up against. But we've already got two eliminations here, which is pretty good for early game. So another free look at the flop here, but nothing comes. These games are playing pretty passive early on. This isn't very normal. Flop middle pair. Might throw out a two-thirds pot bet here just to see where we're at. If we get a call, we're obviously shutting down. Although the turn pairs... I'm going to throw out another little bet here, see if we can get a fold on that paired turn. Uh, we're obviously going to check fold this river. And ace five, so remember that that guy is playing very weak hands like that, especially from, even from later position. That's pretty weak hand for him to be playing. A6, over bet the pot. I'm probably just going to fold that one. Don't really want to get too involved early on. Ace nine, even though I'm in position, I haven't seen that guy really get involved yet, so can't say his range is too wide from the hijack. Can't even say he's a guy. We don't even know his name, so it's definitely gonna be interesting. I've wanted to try this for quite a while and did a little experiment down at the one dollar games trying to get this all set up but I didn't really play the game seriously, so let's see how this works. Pocket nine is going to be an easy raise if it's folded around to me. I'm um, probably raised to isolate against that guy because we know he's playing pretty weak hand, so I'll put up the three and a half blinds and definitely want to play a hand in position against him if he's willing to give away some chips. And we just got a fold there, so we're almost back to a starting stack. If any of you guys out there haven't tried this, I would definitely recommend it every once in a while. It keeps you on your toes. I mean, I've played without a HUD quite a bit. Once you've played most of your career with a HUD and then you try it without, it gets interesting. Uh, Jack-10 suited is a hand that has a whole lot of ways to hit the flop. Probably going to limp behind here. Hopefully we can hit a hit big flop, especially with a slightly bigger pot here. Um, you know, Try to get that big stack early on. It's a pretty low risk move. It's Jack-10 suited has such a wide wave that it can hit this flop. Um, the gut shot and a back door, two over cards against three opponents. I really don't think I want to risk that much of my stack at this point, so let's just fold that off. Probably limp and play some weaker hands a lot more often than most people do at these games, but really try to you know look for every opportunity I can to add some chips to my stack early on most of these games get to the push fold stage of the game with seven eight nine players still left so any advantage you can get in early game to separate yourself from them is really a big help 
later on in the game. But don't go overboard with it. And definitely keep yourself disciplined on the flop. So got some action down here. We had a I believe that was a steal. Oops, don't want to look at the replayer because that's showing names. Wanted to relook at that hand, but looked to me like it was a button steal and then a over then a shove over with pocket nines and called with the ace king. So it's really gonna test my concentration abilities. I'm used to stacking and stacking my table so I only see one thing in front of me. I like to minimize distractions as much as possible and usually rely on stats for my reads but now I've got to really focus on the game and see what type of reads we can get from these players and the fact that we don't know who's on these different tables really hurts us so got some chips flying around on the bottom left table And that king two suited that that guy got involved with, we um definitely got to remember that he called a raise in position with king two suited. So it's definitely not the most sane player out there. And he seems to be involved in almost every hand so far. Betting out 50 chips into a 475 pot. That's a clear sign of weakness. Hopefully this guy is going to raise this river here. Must have been playing a flush draw or some other type of weaker hand. Um, but that would have been a very go good opportunity to raise that river there against a pretty weak range from that other player. Got a button shove against an under the gun limper. So remember that guy. Ace four. If it wasn't for the loose player limping there, I'd probably think about shoving this one. It's a little bit too weak for me to shove 13 blinds over a limper with ace four. Ace eight, I would definitely be shoving here. Um, I don't think there's really any reason to complete here either. Pocket twos, slightly better. It is a paired hand. I think we could shove over top of this limper with pocket twos. We haven't really been very involved yet. It is the same guy that we were isolating before, so we know he is capable of folding. And we add a little bit onto our stack by doing that. Now, if that guy had called my isolation raise earlier on in the game, I would have thought twice about shoving those twos. But we know that he's capable of folding, so I'm going to use that fact to our advantage. Ace-jack on the bottom right table. Hopefully we get a good opportunity with this hand. If the button shoves, it's an easy call for me. Um, if cutoff raises, I might think about shoving over the top. Haven't seen the hijack do much yet, so I'm probably not good against his range. So if this button shoves, it will be a call for me. Or a shove over the top, actually. Ace-10 suited, probably not very good against that range there. And we add a little bit to our stack there, so it's looking pretty healthy. Ace 10 is probably a little weak to raise over the top here against this cutoff. I haven't, he hasn't been too, too active. Um, it's Ace Jack, I would probably be shoving over the top, but I think I'm going to let Ace 10 go at that point. I've already built up a pretty decent stack. I don't need to risk too much of it so 
just yet. So we're in third place on this table, on the bottom right table. And we will be looking for some spots to add some chips, but I think Ace-10 is a little bit too weak. Reed Litz, if I had more stats on him, knew he was stealing pretty wide, I would definitely shove over the top there. And we've got a cutoff limp here. Stack's a little bit too deep to think about doing anything too much. Flop a pretty weak flush draw. We might call a smallish bet here. Um, probably try to check raise this turn. See if he gets stupid. We'll just go with slightly bigger check raise. Unfortunately, we get a fold. Hope, hopefully, we would get a little bit of action on that. But I think opening up on that... If if we had led the turn when we hit the flush, I don't think we would have gotten nearly enough calls out of that player to make it worth it. 10-3 suited. I uh, must have... Oh, yeah, there was a limper there. That's why I let it go. Got to make sure I don't hover any of the, over these players' names to end up seeing who they are. King 10, a lot of players to go through and no reason to get involved there. Jack 6, I don't think it's strong enough to steal in this spot. I've got no idea what this guy's going to do if, if he's going to play back at me. My stack's in a pretty vulnerable spot there if he could easily re-steal shove over top of me. Um, Ace Queen, we'll put this up to 2.5x and probably call it a shove from either of the blinds. Throw out a half pot C bet there. That's not a very scary flop. Two players in. Ace 10 is easily a fold. 5 6 suited on a limped pot. Usually consider shoving this one, but I think I can play it a little bit different and take a lead on this flop. That's kind of ugly board that's not going to hit that limper a lot, but it will hit a, a big blinds range because I have such a random range of hands there. Six three suited. Probably would have open shoved that if it was folded around to me, but we're not obviously not going to get involved against the raise. Queens versus sixes up here. So I tend to give this big stack a little more respect. King eight, no reason to get involved there. Jack seven suited. If my stack was shorter, around seven and a half, eight blinds, I'd probably think about shoving here, but this big blind is playing very loose. I don't have a whole lot of fold equity, so I'm going to let that one go in that spot. Ace-Queen, it's an easy shove. Probably shove over the top of someone that raises. So let's just get it in there. Queen-3 suited against the big stack. Again, I've got a healthy stack. I don't really want to risk too much of it. A lot of limping going on in these games for $16. It's a little bit weird. I'd be very interested at the end to see who we're playing against here. See how many of these guys are regulars and how many of them aren't. 
ace queen um a little deep here 11 blinds but if i raise it to anything decent chance of getting restolen on it's pretty big so i'm just going to open shove here hand strong enough that i'm not really worried about one of the other guys one of the looser players calling me Seven eight suited, no way we're getting involved out of position for that much of our stack. So it's what a majority of our decisions need to focus on is is our stack dynamic, how we fit in with the rest of the table. And also how the rest of the table is playing. We're pretty weak on reads here, but you can still see that. You know, this guy seems like he's playing pretty loose. He Every time he shows a hand, it's a pretty strong hand. So he might just be on a very good run. Um, now we've got two very big stacks and three of us pretty much fighting for third place at this point. So I have to target these other two players as much as possible. And unfortunately, we run into a better hand. And now we're at a severe disadvantage. So 7-9 suited will be good enough for me to get involved here with such a short stack. Probably call this raise here. I've got a pretty good odds against this player. I've got some live cards. Let's shove the ace-10. I'm in a, that awkward stack size again. These guys are all shorter than me, so it's Whew, quad eights. How about that? Five three suited. Make that a fold there. Pocket jacks. Probably call any shove here. And unfortunately, we get a walk. Deuces, a little bit weak from the hijack going in read lists. Um, the only player I'm really concerned about here is the big blind since his stack is rivaling that of mine. He could really could bust me out. Um, these other two shorter stacks are obviously probably going to be calling a lot looser. Uh, that 9-7 suited hand was probably a slight, it was probably a negative EV play. Uh, the big stack had been playing a little bit loose. And I was getting pretty good odds against his hand. Probably had some lap cards against his range. So um, everyone around me, everyone to my left is pretty short. Just make a standard raise and hopefully I can induce some action here. Put it up to 3x. Don't think anyone's going to get too involved here. But it's worth a shot. Now we're down to five-handed on this table. And again, we're pretty much in this three-way tie for fourth place, or for third, four, third, fourth, fifth place. So we've really got to target to the guy to our right and the guy to our left and really stay away from the big stacks as much as possible. No way we can call a shove that big with a hand that weak. This guy to our right's getting pretty active now, so we could probably open up our calling range on him a little bit wider. I know it's only been a few hands, but we've got to work with what we got. Um, not quite getting good enough odds for me to feel comfortable calling this 7 8 suited. I'm going to let it go. My stack's pretty healthy. I don't want to take any unnecessary risks at that point. 6-3 suited, a limper, a min raise. Pretty weak spot. 
Um, again, maybe let's try to induce some action with these aces. You know what? I'm so short, it'll just look suspect. And on the bubble, obviously, jacks are good enough to get it in there. We really don't care about getting called too much. And hopefully we survive this confrontation with the king-queen, and we did. And unfortunately, we were up against the kings on the bubble down there. So, case of us getting our money in in a pretty good spot and just happened to run into the top of someone's range. Happens way more often than we would like to see. Tile these tables up, make them a little bigger. Hopefully, we don't get a peek at any names. All right, we're good. Six three, just such an awkward stack size. Don't want to get involved there. King eight would probably be a, a normal steal for me if both of these guys were in a bigger. Stacks position, but if I just put it up to a regular raise, it's too much of a chance of me, you know, risking a third of my stack here against that big blind. I want to conserve the stack that I've built at this point. Especially if we already know he's a little bit loose after him calling our nine blind shove, king queen. I mean, it's not a not a horrible call on his part, but we know that he's going to call a decent amount of hands. In this stage of the game, we're looking for every opportunity we can to steal a pot, build our stack, especially the um, when we're in the six-handed stage here, five, six-handed is really where you should be separating yourself from the rest of the table. You should take a little bit bigger risks than you would normally and try to get yourself in a very good position for when you get to the bubble. Um, when we get to the bubble, it's really the spot where a lot of the best players make their most money is by exploiting the weaknesses of others on the bubble. And when you get there with the big stack, you can really take advantage of the rest of the table and keep adding to your stack. Um, and we're kind of not getting too many great hands like this. It makes it a challenge, but we've got to look for some close spots whenever they present themselves. Pocket threes here. I'll just open shove this. There's enough out there that's going to make a big difference to my stack if I take it. I'm doing a standard raise there. When the guy covers me, he's going to be pretty likely to re-steal pretty wide on me with a big pot out there and since I've got to be very risk averse against him on the re-steal I want to kind of avoid that situation altogether and just be the one to open shove I mean that was a pretty deep shove something like 13 blinds when you adjust for the ante but I feel it was my best option at that point in time So now our stack's a little bit bigger. Doing a standard raise with the queens really won't look that weird. So we can do it to 500 and call anyone that shoves on us. Now when we had the aces earlier with like a seven and a half blind stack, we just did a two and a half X raise. It looks, it looks very strong. That's a very common line for someone to take. But when I'm deeper like this, up over 15 blinds, you know, a cutoff shove isn't that common for 15 blinds, so a uh, standard raise looks like a better opportunity at that point. King Jack suited, getting this in if it's folded around. Easy, easy shove.
and now we're pretty much right in the thick of it pretty much tied for third place and if we can get away with this queen jack steal here then we'll be starting to separate ourselves from the competition we're not really worried about the short stack too much here it's the other guy that has a very similar stack to us and now we could end up the short stack although he's calling with a five line range his range is probably isn't the strongest although it's one hand I really didn't want to see and now we're in short stack mode queen jack offsuit plenty good enough to get it in and we did just shove three hands in a row so we're going to get called very wide but we're probably not going to get a better opportunity when you're under five blinds you really got to take every chance you get because your fold equity is and we end up in the same exact situation so at least we got outs here and we hit the outs beautiful right back where we started 8 7 2 did a little bit if the um if the blinds had these shorter stacks I might have thought about shoving that 8 7 suited but the fact that the blinds are the two big stacks the ones that I really don't want to have confrontation with um, that leads me to be a little more tight shoving from the hijack at this point ace queen bubble um, depending on what happens here we might get involved So we really got to do what we can to pick on this guy to our left here. Unfortunately, I just showed his name real quick, but I didn't I didn't catch it. Maybe you did. Ace 3 not quite good enough at this point in time. And when the blinds start going up like this on the left table, we gotta really look for some any opportunity we can here. If it's five three is folded, we'll instantly shove that. Expect to get called wide. We've been called by this guy a lot, but I'm in last place at that point and stealing that pre flop pot put me back up into third place, so taking that type of risk is definitely worth it. This king six is folded. We can easily put some pressure on the shorter stack. It does two things. It builds up our stack, so we're now in first place, and it also shortens him down, which makes the other two players more risk averse. If I had a better read on this, cut off I would think about shoving over the top here since I cover him um, I really have no idea how wide he's gonna call me so I don't want to risk my big stack on the bubble but you can really put a pressure on a lot on a lot of players like that if they are competent players but then again the the fact that his was just a standard type of raise you know could put a lot more weight on his range towards the premium hands And now we're in a much tougher situation. We're covered to our left, so we've got to shove a little bit tighter. And we can expect the short stack to be shoving on us a lot. So this is going to be a tricky bubble to get through. Um, you know, table dynamics are everything, especially on the bubble. We're never going to fold ace-10 in this spot unless... We're probably good against his range. He's been pretty act active. Um, I think I'm going to get it in there. <laughs> oh, pretty good. Um, that's the worst flop imaginable. Whew. 
Ace 10 isn't a standard call for me there, but that guy's been so active throughout the course of the game that I really considered him to be a lot wider at that spot. And this table on the left is turning to be a pretty tricky one. There's a big stack clash that really kind of put us in a very tough situation. So if this queen eight's folded around to us, we got to take an opportunity and try to build our stack here. Unfortunately, we're just not getting many opportunities. Jack eight, good enough for me to get it in here. That pot's so big, it's over half my stack. Um, we're going to get called really wide, but we've got to take some risk here. So at least we have two overs here. Maybe we can spike something. King 10, it's worth getting it in here to give a little separation. King three is a little bit weak at this spot. Probably be shoving like a king three suited might think about it just because of the fact that I cover both of these guys and they both have really healthy stacks. Um, from the cutoff in this situation, I've got to be very, very tight. Probably only shoving about a 10% range at that point. And hopefully one of these confrontations will benefit us finally. And we made it through. So at least we cash one out of three. And it's going to be it. interesting in the money play because we've got the shorty on our right. It's going to be shoving all the time and big stack on our left. So it's going to be difficult for us to get any type of separation here. But hand as good as king queen suited. We'll definitely shove that on the but button. Jack four, we gotta fold that. Eight two suited. It's a little bit on the weak spot. I don't think this guy's gonna call me too too wide here because it's a whole lot of his stack. It's a very thin spot, but we gotta do what we can to Build up our stack a little bit because the blinds are getting so high at this point. Not quite getting good enough odds here to feel comfortable about calling. We know he's really wide. I just don't think I'm quite wide enough to call with the queen two suited. Queen eight suited, queen seven suited, I'd probably be calling. Um, five, three, I've already been shoving pretty wide. I don't want to shove a hand that weak at that point. We can easily shove the button now. Probably getting a little better odds on this shove. Uh, we're getting the exact same odds as last time. Eight, seven suited, getting about three to two. I really don't feel comfortable with it. I know he's very, very wide, but there's so many over cards that crush us there. 8-4. The guy's been folding a lot, but we've also been shoving a lot. It's kind of a balancing act there. Um, Jack-7 suited. I folded. I just think the big blind's too likely to call here. And there'd be a good chance of confrontation like that that we can really benefit from. Let's 
So now we're in a slightly better position because we're going to cover the guy to our immediate left. So we can easily apply a lot more pressure to him. Well, that's the game. We're all in for the big blind, and I think I'm much better off taking the blind at this spot. Ooh, we might get very lucky here. Wow, that was very, very fortunate of us. We just totally lucked into second place. Shows you how confrontations after you can really, really benefit you. And nothing to do at this point, but sit back and wait. Probably get just about anything in on this small blind. And that's a good card for an any two card shove. And would you look at that? Well, that's the session. Um, let's go take a peek and see who we were playing in those games. Shut off that HUD so it's not showing. Uh, there's no really big names that I'm very familiar with at that table. So this next game, let's look at the first hand. And we got pretty fortunate. There's no Sippin' Chris or Jay Weezy or Aaron Barone or any of the other really big names at the 16, so we must have been registering at the perfect time. Unfortunately, we didn't get a very profitable ses session out of it, but yeah. All right, well, hopefully we demonstrated just a little bit of basic strategy today and how, you know, we can really just play pretty simple and if we didn't get a little bit unlucky on a couple of those spots like running into the kings when we had jacks on the bubble would have turned out to be a pretty decent session so you can really apply a lot of these basic concepts and still get through even some of the toughest games so all right for bluefirepoker.com this has been dive banksters and we'll see you guys next time for episode five